Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Friday, September the 16th, and our devotions are coming from Joanna Weaver's book called At the Feet of Jesus. And our opening scripture, it comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 9. Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Concerning Lazarus's resurrection, author Jerry Goebel writes, The work of Jesus is to bring life. The work of the congregation is to unbind people from the trappings of death. The words that Christ speaks are so full, he literally tells the congregation, destroy what holds him down, send him forth free. Unfortunately, most of us would rather observe a resurrection than actually participate in one. Like the priest and the Levite who passed by the wounded man in the story of the Good Samaritan, we shy away from actually getting involved in the work of loving someone back to life. Some of us may even prefer the role of cynic, refusing to believe that God has really changed a person or that the change can last. And I'm going to pause there for a, for a second. It's unfortunate, but often this is where you'll see a spirit of religion and legalism can infect a congregation. Again with the hiccups. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not sure at what point I understand how easy it is to kind of get tangled up in that because you don't want to excuse away or glorify sin and someone who is not living by a holy standard. But on the other hand, too, the word tells us that we are not to basically kick somebody when they're down because one choice we're one choice away from being in that same place. Okay. We have to understand our frailty just because we're good with God right now and we're living a life that we feel is righteous and good does not mean that tomorrow or the next day we could be the one in the gutter because of a choice, a bad choice. We have to recognize how frail we are. Literally one choice away from doing what you never thought you would ever do. That is why it is so important to be in a solid, committed relationship with the Lord, daily seeking his face, not to say some memorized formulaic prayers that the religious denomination says you must, but a sincere conversation with your creator every day. He wants with you what he had with Adam and Eve in the garden before the fall. That's what he wants. He wants us with him. That's why we have a savior, Jesus. That's why he came to pay the price so that we could then live for eternity with our heavenly father and be with him. Okay. Be careful. Ask the Lord what it is that you can do. Give you a heart for the lost filled with his mercy so that his will can be done. We don't know what's happened to somebody in their life that has led them down the path of where they are. We don't know. I don't think anybody ever as a small child has a determination to become an addict, to become a criminal of any kind. You have a child who something happened in their life, whether it was poor parenting, bad influences, victimization, whatever happened to this child that turned them into what you consider to be this reprobate sinner that you scorn could ever change. God knows the heart of that child. He loves that person. He loves them dearly. He doesn't love you any more than he loves the person who's in the worst state ever. His love for, for you is the same as for him. So it's important for us to remember that. All too often, we never unbind those who Christ has resurrected. Goebel says we are more excited for them to fail than to change. We're looking for them to go back. <laughs> Let's be honest, okay? We don't believe in the miracle working power of Christ or the encouragement. It does have to be a transformation that Christ has done. 
And that's why being in relationship with the Lord is so important. So you can hear his Holy Spirit's direction about what you need to do and what you need to not do, to be honest. Oh, yeah, well, I know that feeling and it will only last a month. You know, that can be our attitude. Yeah, let's just see where it goes. An attitude like that breaks God's heart. Goebel continues, we bind people through our attitudes towards them. We bind them when we hold on to their faults instead of lifting up and encouraging their attempts to change. We bind people when we don't forgive them. That's, that's a tough one. We free them when we are determined to see new life in them. We free them when we forgive them. We free them the most when we seek them in their tombs and snorting at death, we command them in the name of Jesus to come into new life. That is the work we are called to as brothers and sisters in the Lord, unbinding through acceptance and love those whom Jesus has resurrected. Now, I want to go back to kind of that pious spirit of religion that can often have a fixed idea in their mind about what church people are supposed to look like and what they're supposed to dress like, etc. And I think specifically I'm going to address the issue of young ladies. Our culture nowadays is not the most modest in its attire. Okay, let me put that delicately. It's not the most modest. So when a young lady comes in dressed in a very provocative manner, in the best way that she knows how, because that's all she knows. That's all she knows. She hasn't been raised with anything else. That's all she knows. She's doing her best. We don't look at her or say the body of Christ should not look at her as a Jezebel, should not look at her as a harlot of any kind. You have to look at past the, the garments and look to the heart. And ask the Lord in prayer, Lord, reveal to her. She may feel that's the most attractive way. She may have a level of brokenness you're unaware of that you don't need to be judging. Okay? God can heal that brokenness. He can transform her and immediately take away the desire to look a certain way because she feels that's how she's the prettiest. Do you see what I'm saying? I've been in a, in a broken place of needing to feel attractive to men. And I didn't necessarily dress. I've always been modest. But, you know, there were things about me that were deliberate because I needed validation. I needed to feel that my value and worth was wrapped up in a compliment. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a level of emotional brokenness that drives people to say or do things or to wear things or you see what I'm saying? There's a need. There are people who just, they feel in order to have value and worth, they have to have a designer label. They have to have a certain car. They have to have certain clothes, certain brands. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a brokenness. And, you know, some of it could be just pure flat vanity. Who knows? But it's important that we not allow the things we see with our eyes to blind us to the real spirit. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what needs to be revealed about that person and pray for them with a heart of loving, kind benevolence, not nasty judgment, not jealousy. Sometimes it's jealousy because a woman is beautiful and she's getting looks and affirmation from, from men. At some point, the Lord will reveal to her she doesn't need to dress that way. And he will give her a desire to change that. I know he will. Now, our scripture comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. And let's see. Have grace. <laughs> I ask the Lord every morning, I ask for and receive your grace today because we want to, people to be filled with grace and kindness when we're messing up, don't we? When we're doing things without realizing, right? When we're making mistakes because that's all we know, right? We want people to be kind and loving and accepting. 
Okay. Okay, so this is verse 9b. That means the second half of the verse through 12. Isaiah 58, 9 through 12. Okay. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You, are, you will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. So what are we to do away with and spend ourselves upon? What will be the result? Okay, we are to re remove the heavy yoke of oppression, stop pointing fingers and spreading vicious lies. Do away with those things. Feed the hungry, help those in trouble. Then your light will shine. The Lord will guide you continually, give you water, restore your strength, well-watered garden, ever-flowing spring. These are all the things. I love how God is so specific. When you do this, this will happen, good and bad. This is the consequence. <laughs> when you do this, these are the things that will follow. I love it. It's very clear. It's very clear. Well, let's pray. I hope this word is encouraging to you. As we pray and agree together, I know that God is going, he's, he's transforming me as I'm hoping he's transforming you as well, giving you revelation of his word and what it is and how it is he wants us to behave and act as his representatives. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word again. It's life to us, Father. It, it is the, the map that we need to follow so that we are your true representatives. Help us to die to ourselves that your light will shine even brighter through us, Father. Help us to show mercy and have compassion to one another. Give us your strength and your grace every day and our, your every thought, word, and action that we can be your hands extended to those who need it most. In Jesus' name. God bless you, and thank you for spending a little time with me today. I hope you decide to like and subscribe, click that notification bell, share with the channel with others. I'm so blessed by the people that have subscribed. You have no idea. It's beyond my comprehension. I never dreamed that I would, you know, be over 500, and then I know that from... From now, when I go even further, who knows how far, how many subscribers I'll get. But you guys mean so much to me. You have no idea how blessed I am. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye until next time.